Okay. I'm Brittany Crossan, and I forgot my cardboard cutout of Adrian. <laughs> so, and we worked with a cosmic ray detector. We haven't gotten to the radio waves part yet, but we finally figured it out <laughs> this morning. Okay, um, quick overview of cosmic ray muon detection, which is what we've been trying to do. Cosmic rays are high energy particles moving at nearly, nearly the speed of light, uh, lots of nines and then five two at the end. Um, muons are one type of particle produced by cosmic rays. Uh, it's basically the only particle that can get through all the atmosphere to be able to be detected at sea level. Um, and cosmic ray detectors, or at least the one I'm working with, detects muons specifically. A shower is caused when a particle um, enters the atmosphere, gets another particle, and then becomes a shower of particles, as the name says. And we are mainly detecting showers. Our purpose, purpose <laughs> is research on this. Um, the detected the excuse me, the detection of cosmic rays via radio waves. When a high energy cosmic ray shower hits the Earth's atmosphere, it puts off a flash able to be picked up uh, like a radio wave or by a radio antenna. Um, our current goal, which actually has kind of changed because we just, this morning I just figured this out, to lower the trigger rate to keep mostly true triggers but block out most noise and providing a trigger rate no higher than a specific frequency so that we can, um, the radio detector can record it. <sighs> I love this hardware. I really don't. Um, we had to put all of these counters together, these are actually our hardware, to be able to make it work. Um, and in putting them all together, we discovered that we had a, I don't want to say broken because it still functions, but a malfunctioning photomultiplier tube which are one of the expensive and main things that lets us, let us um, make the detector work, basically. Um, so we had to figure out how to work with that, and we ended up working around it, and yeah. <laughs> and that's it. The only other setback is the cables are really, really long, unnecessarily so. Um, we can adjust several parameters through commands, and that's what we needed to do to lower the trigger rate and make sure we picked up as few nuance, I mean, as little noise as possible. And um, for the entirety of the summer research program, we've been working, me measuring the difference in gate width, pipeline, like, um, things like that, uh, folds to see what we can, um, how we can lower the noise, um, we tried three different geometric configurations for the paddles, because we have four of them. So we have stacked, pedal, and spread out, basically. Um, stacked is all four of the counters, stacked one on top of another. Pedal is them next to each other, and then the we've done them stacked two by two, several meters apart, to see if that makes any change. The fold is how many paddles a, a particle or anything has to go through to be able to be picked up as the final, in the final count, so as an actual coincidence. Um, the gate width is how long it has to go through those specific number of paddles, and the pipeline delay is the delay in um, can't remember the word I'm looking for. It's the delay in uh, how long it takes commands and things to go, basically. Um, we discovered that threshold was the thing, the one thing we needed to change. Um, because the cosmic rays that we're detecting are very high, are high energy, um, and most of the noise is not, we were, we were able to raise the threshold um, which means we were ra able to raise the level of energy necessary for it to be recorded as a coincidence. And that's what blocked out a lot of the noise and got us down to what we needed to do. Um, and figuring all these commands out was quite difficult. 
Not because they're not recorded in the manual, but because I, I just kind of have something against reading manuals. Um, all of this research is done at LOFAR and ERA. Um, we're kind of, um, LOFAR is a multi-sensory array created to make astronomical observations using relative lo relatively low radio frequencies. Um, basically, um, ERA, a system of antennae measuring short radio pulses, the flash emitted by the showers, and there are quite a few more de uh, detectors picking up radio waves, um, including Anita, I believe. Um, and we're kind of doing something similar, or will be eventually. And the Cosmic Ray E-Lab is a site with a collection of a bunch of, where a bunch of students and schools and other people upload the data they gather. And Eventually, I think we're going to end up uploading some of ours because we've had some interesting things. We've done some interesting experiments and trials that we haven't seen very much of on the ELA. And that's, I don't have a fancy questions page, but um, the future, I think we're going, I'm going, we're going to look into actually getting it hooked up with the radio and start detecting these showers through the radio now that we have the um, now that we have the countdown to what we assume is mostly true triggers. And um, special thanks to Jim Dean, Dr. Besson, and Josh Macy. Yes. And the people at Corknet that I can't remember the name of currently. Any questions? So how do you know when you have the trick when the trigger rate's accurate? Um, there's an equation you can use that basically predicts in a certain area how um, how many coincidences will happen. But and basically it narrows it down to about one per square centimeter per second, I think. So you <clears throat> You worked on bringing that that trigger level down to a, to a lower frequency so you could trigger. What was the limiting factor? Um, why why did you have to get that trigger level down? The radio can't reliably pick up those triggers, from what I've been told, if it's at a faster frequency, and we need to make sure that the scope it's connected to can take the data. So, I basically what we did was lower it down to one every about every five seconds that will let us um, be able to, it'll give the scope time to upload it to the computer. So pretty high. quantitatively, how much did you have to raise the threshold? Was it factor two or factor two? Um, can't tell you the factor off the top of my head, but the factory um, standard, like what the default is, that's weird, is um, 0.3 volts and I'm, reliably getting the number, we're at about 1.1, 1.0 to 1.1 volts. So, more than I expected we'd have to, but... We begin to see the trigger rate as a function of that threshold, just to make sure it's moving smoothly and maybe not just moving across the screen. I don't, I don't, I don't have a graph of it yet, Okay. Um, but from what I've seen at, of the data, it's it's going down rather smoothly. Okay. Did you plateau the photo tubes, the, the high voltage on the photo tubes, so you know you're already in the high voltage in the plateau region on the high voltage on the photo tubes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So um, you're, you're well above that? Yes. Okay. The one, the photomultiplier tube that was broken, we had to plateau a little bit differently. It's, it, it's, Plateauing value is at a much higher value than the rest of them, but it's working at about the same uh, speed and yeah. Okay.